Hello everyone, and we are going to begin with our first lecture of Analytics for Business and Economics, and this is going to give us an introduction um, to Posit Cloud. Posit Cloud was formerly known as RStudio Cloud, um, and this is the statistical software package that we are going to be using for class. So without any further ado, we'll jump right in. So what is Posit Cloud? Well, Posit Cloud is an online version of something called RStudio. RStudio is a front end or a what's called an integrated development environment, an IDE, for a programming language called R. R is a programming language, it's been around for 20, 25 years now, that is designed to help do statistical analysis. Um, it's very powerful, it has tons and tons of capabilities, and Beyond its base capabilities, there have been thousands of packages written for R that are kind of like add-ons that allow it to do all kinds of things within statistical analysis. It has some really great advantages in that it's entirely open source, which means it's free. Um, RStudio is a wonderful and actively um, developed uh, um, integrated developing environment that makes it easy to work with. and it's one of the languages of data analytics. And if you know even just a little bit about R, you're able to communicate and work with um, individuals within your organization to bring data in, bring data utilization in a much, much greater way. So let's talk a little bit more about Posit Cloud. Posit Cloud is a service done through a company called Posit, used to be called RStudio. Um, but um, they do it all through the web. So you don't have to worry about installing anything. You don't have to worry about getting anything updated. You don't have to worry about what platform you're using. We're all going to be on an equal footing. This is how I will teach the class. There are other ways to use R, but we're not going to deal with those in this class. Um, if you have applications where you need to use another way, you can talk to me after class and we'll, and, and I'll see if I can help you get started in the right way. Um, one of the things that you need to do is you need to have um, an account with Posit Cloud. Now there are several different types. One of them is the free type. That's the that's the one you need. You need cloud free. You don't need plus. You don't need premium, and you don't need instructor. I have a cloud instructor account, and because I have a cloud instructor account, you'll be able to use resources that I have at my disposal. Um, through your cloud free account. So you don't need to worry about um, signing up for any kind of an account that you have to pay for. If you have to, if it asks you for money, it's the wrong one. It's not the one I'm asking you to use. So don't um, get anything but the free account. So the next thing that we need to do to get ready for class is step one, we've got to create account. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over here. I've already clicked on this link and these are available in the lecture notes which are on canvas of course um, i'm going to click on this link and we're going to come over here to sign up all right so i have um, the posit cloud um, website brought up here on the on the right hand side of the screen and i'm going to come up here to where it says sign up and i'm going to go ahead and click sign up okay so the next thing is it gives me these different things that I want to do. I don't want to learn more. I want to come down and um, let's see here. Let me get myself a little more space. I guess maybe I do want to learn more. All right, I'm going to learn more, but I'm not going to pay attention to it. I'm just going to go ahead and sign up because I want the cloud free account. All right, now, really basic login page. All right, no problem. So the first thing you want to do, give it an email address. You don't have to give it your UWRF email address, but you can. I highly recommend doing that. Make sure it's an email address you have access to. I'm just going to give it one of my email addresses that I don't think I've signed up with. Um, then I'm going to create a password. All right, we'll do a simple password. Make sure it's... Make sure it's a strong password. You can use your password manager. I'm not going to tell you about how to do that. Um, I'm going to do a simple one for this account for right now. And it says it's mildly strong. All right. Well, that's okay. 
because I'll cancel this account as soon as I get it done. This is just to show you how to do it. Bing, easy peasy. Then I'm going to click sign up. There's also three other ways you could do this. You could sign up using your Google account. You can sign up with your GitHub account. You probably don't have a GitHub account. If you're interested in what that can do, I can show you that after class. But um, or a clever account, and I don't actually know what the clever is all about. I think it has it's something to do with um, learning management systems, and we don't use that on our campus. So I'm going to sign that up. I'm not going to say my password. Boom! It's going to send me an email verifying my email address. All right, it says you haven't verified your email address. So pause for just a second. I'll go do that. All right, here's the email that Posit Cloud sent to me. I'm just going to click on here, verify that email, and I will get the following message. Email verified, hot dog. So let's get rid of that. We'll get rid of this. Then we're going to hit continue again. And it lets me in just like that. Here's my workspace. I have nothing in here because it's a brand new account. So the next thing I need to do is I need to come down here and I need to join the class workspace. All right, so um, I have given you a link to join the workspace and we'll go to that real quick. So if I come back over here, I'm gonna go to, this is my um, version of the class. Let me click student view so it looks like yours. So we're here in Canvas. I'm gonna scroll down here to the before you begin class. Come in here, join Ardo Studio Workspace. We're just gonna click on that right here. It gives me this, do you want to join the workspace? Yes, no. Yes, I do. And there you go. Um, welcome to the Econ 326 Assignments Workspace. Awesome, we're in. Right. It's really important. You will not be able to access the homework without being in this workspace. That's so that's important. You need to do that. So since we're here and we're in Posit Cloud, we've joined the workspace. Let's do a quick tour of what our Studio Cloud looks like. So let me come back. I'm going to click on here. I'm just going to go into my own workspace, just the personal workspace. And you have something like this. I'm going to go ahead and click on new project. For the most part, you're not going to need to make a new project um, because you will already have a project um, that I've set up for you, so an assignment. But if you're starting from scratch, this is what you're doing. You can come up here and give your tri a project a title. So I'm going to call it um, first project, just like that. So now it has a title and we can see, hey, we're the Beagle Scouts. That tells us we're on the most recent version of our studio of R and the most recent version of our studio. This is really one of the nice things about our studio cloud is I don't have to worry about updates or stuff like that. It's all done for us. And here we go. Here's our um, our beginning of our studio. You're gonna notice that there are four different um, there are, let me let me shrink my um, lecture slides just a little bit. No, it won't let me. Okay, in any event, um, we have four different quadrants. Well, right now we have three, but think of it as two columns. So this left-hand column is gonna have the console. It's also gonna have what we call the source panel. So I'm just gonna click over here and I'm gonna tell it I want to open an R script. So there's this little paper with a plus here it says basically new file. I'm going to click on that and then I'm going to click on I want an R script. And now I have four different windows basically. I have right up here where I can type in stuff. All right. And the, the little pound sign means that's a comment. And we'll talk more about that later. But I can type stuff up here. This is called the code window or the source panel because it's the source code. Over below here, um, in the bottom um, left-hand quadrant is called the console, and this is where output comes 
right? So if I wanted to do, or I could just type directly in here, one plus one, and there you go. It tells me it's two. That's that's lovely. It can add. Um, I can come over here to this little broom. It's kind of hard to see, but there's a broom that cleans the window. There's another broom over here that cleans your environment, but we'll talk about that in just a second. This window up here in the upper right-hand corner is the environment history window. It just has a bunch of utility type things. But if let's say I wanted to store a variable, a equals five. So I'm gonna put five inside of a. Don't worry about that, that command right now. We're gonna have a whole series, uh, a whole lecture where we talk about some basic commands in R. But notice, poof, it puts the value of a right up in here. And so this gives you this global environment is what it's called. Um, it's all the stuff stored in memory. If I click on this little broom, I can make it all go away. Isn't that wonderful? And then finally, down here in this last bottom right quadrant, I generally just use the files tab. It shows me all the files that are in my project. Right here, I don't have very many files, just the basic things that R makes for it. But if I were to come over here and take this untitled um, document that I have up here in the corner and I saved it and I'm going to call it first R script. All right, it's called script because it's like a script, like you're doing a play, you're telling the computer what to do. Boom, there it is. All right, so on and so forth. And that's just a, that's a really basic tour of what's going on in R um, and R Studio. Now, I want to show you one other thing. If you come over here to click on your workspace, if you click here, it brings you here and you can see there's your project. That's our first project. If I click back in here, it's going to load it and bring me back to it. But one other thing I can do is if I come over, let's see, I need to, let me make this small and then make it big again. I can see right over here, I've got some menus at the side. One of the things you can do is click on this little circle with an X in it and make that go away. And then you're gonna have this little pancake or hamburger menu that brings it back. I can then come down here and click on Econ 326. And here are the projects that I've started that are gonna be assignments. So we could click on case one and you don't have to go through this way. These are all gonna be linked to in um, Canvas. So don't worry if you can't find it. It'll be there in Canvas, I promise. I'm going to click into there, and it's clicking into my project. And it will make a case for you. It'll make it your own file and make it so that you can um, save that file just as, as soon as you open it. And it kind of automatically saves for you. So... There's a few places where you can save things where you can say, yes, I want to record these changes. But if your computer just like conks out, it's not going to, you're not going to lose things always. And there we are. If I come down here, I can click on this place where it says case one. And there we go. All right. Come back here and there's my stuff. All right. And you can see my new case one is right there and it was derived from this original case right here all right so the next thing we want to talk about is well writing and running some code so let's do a real real simple version of that i'm going to click over here and kick back on my pancake i'm going to come back to my space and i'm going to click on my first project And let's just run some code. Let's start out with, I'm going to use a command called print. And that just prints something to the, the console. And we'll do the typical coding, hello world, right there. So this is going to be our first thing. How are we going to do that? Well, first of all, notice it's spell checked my word panel. I'm happy about that. I'm going to take and I'm going to highlight what I wanted to run. And then I'm going to either click on that guy right there, which says run the current line or selection, or I can hit control enter on a, on a, Mac, on a PC or command enter on a Mac. 
and it will run it. And there we go. It prints out my code and then gives me my output. Hello world, isn't that wonderful? So we just ran some code, okay? Don't worry, there's a lot more. I know it's a little bit overwhelming, but we're gonna get to it soon. The next thing I can do is, well, wait right here, I might want help. Well, there's a lot of functions in, in R, like, you know, for example, this print function is a function. Maybe I don't know how to work it. So I'm gonna hit a question mark then P-R-I-N-T. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hit Command Enter to run that command. And what's going to happen next is right down here in this bottom right quadrant, it's going to click to the Help tab. And it's going to bring up Print. It's going to tell me that here this tells me it's in the base package, so I don't have to load any packages. We'll talk about those later. Um, it comes down here and gives me all kinds of information, gives you examples of how to do it, tells you about each one of the arguments. So right here, quote, logical, indicating whether or not strings should be printed by surrounded by quotes. So let's use that. We're going to come in here. I'm going to hit comma. And then I'm going to use something that's great about our studio. I'm going to hit the tab button. Oh, it says it doesn't have any matches. That's a bummer. Oftentimes it does, but we're going to do quote, just like what it has right here. And then it says it's a logical, so I'm going to say quote, Q-U-O-T-E, equals false. And I had to do that in all caps, just like that. Now if I run this again, looky there. Hello world, no quotation marks. Isn't this cool? Looks like there's a lot of other stuff that we can use with the print function. Generally speaking, we're not going to do a lot of that, but there's an example of how you get help. All right, so real basic in conclusion, um, study of R and, and R Studio is really valuable in the field of business analytics. Uh, there is just tons and tons of functionality, and it's very, very affordable. Number two, RStudio enhances experience with R. RStudio does a lot of, has a lot of stuff built into it to make working with R much, much easier. Then finally, we're going to talk about mastering R and RStudio can really enhance your proficiency in business analytics. It can also give you a real differentiating factor um, for your resume. So when you get out there looking for a job, when you can say, yes, I know a little bit of R, maybe I'm, maybe I'm not an expert, but at least I can speak intelligently to people who are experts, that can really set you apart. All right, so we will continue in our next lecture.